One of the most overlooked and misunderstood things in all of HVAC is ductwork. For instance, even if you take a look at my house, the previous homeowners installed a brand new HVAC system about four years ago. Whenever they had the system change out, they replaced all the ductwork, blew in R39 insulation, and installed attic fans, along with a couple other things. And they made all these adjustments because the upstairs would get hot in the summertime and cold in the wintertime, while the downstairs would be at the right temperature. When the contractor got the job, they were probably pretty excited about the cell and decided to install whatever they had on the truck. The ductwork ended up being a full ton undersized, and at the end of the day, we still have hot and cold spots, along with shortening the life of the HVAC system. I would love to say that this is an uncommon problem, but it's actually as normal as rain. It's like this on most homes. So in this video, I'm going to show you all what a bad ductwork design looks like, along with how I would correct this design. So by the end of this video, you're going to know more than 99% of people when it comes to ductwork, how to make your house feel amazing throughout the year, along with protecting your equipment. Please like and subscribe, that will really help me out with the YouTube algorithms. I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so time to get up in the attic and see if there's any funny business going on up there. I'm going to be looking at the air handler along with trying to track down all the ductwork, do a quick static pressure test along with seeing how much working room we're dealing with, which as you can see, not a whole lot. I also need to be looking out for these guys as I'm crawling throughout the attic. Now let's take a look at some of the supply ductwork that we can get to from this side of the unit. One of the things that you'll notice on the supply plenum is that some of the ducts that are coming off of it are right next to the air handler. And that is less than ideal. And the reason for this is the air that's coming out of the air handler is moving pretty fast. And it's kind of like turbulence. So the first 16 inches to 2 feet doesn't have as much pressure. The air can flow past these ducts and can leave you with poor airflow. Now they probably did it this way because there's just not a whole lot of room. The duct that we're looking at here is a 6 inch. The other two beside it are 10 inches. And the one on top is a 7 inch duct. And we're going to use those duct sizes later to calculate CFMs. There's also more duct work on the other side of the unit that I can't really see from here. So I'm going to have to crawl back there in just a second. And here's our 4 ton air handler from 2021 that we're going to be pulling out. We also have a 4 inch April air filter. Let's take a quick look at our disconnects. Nice, everything's loose. The cover is falling out of the disconnect box and that's what I like to see. And you have to ask the question, if you're willing to cut corners on something so cheap, where else were corners cut? And over here we have our 18 inch return air. Now let's climb to the other side of the unit. Getting to the other side of the unit was a bit of a pain because I had to do some gymnastics to get over there. I do have a bad knee from playing football and it makes things pretty difficult to get around in spaces like this. And a quick hack to really help things out is to use these knee braces here. They're made for weightlifting, but man, they sure do help. It looks like this platform is overhanging the joist and there's nothing to support it on this side. And if I step on it, I'll probably step through the ceiling. And it looks like somebody almost did just that. It looks like we also have some trash up here from the last install, which is a nice little present that somebody left behind. This duct here is going to my daughter's room where we have major airflow issues. When it comes to duct runs, you always want it to be as straight as possible with the fewest number of turns, along with being strapped from the rafters. This duct run accomplishes none of those. And that's why we're having airflow issues. It looks like on this side of the plenum we have two fives and one ten. Ooh, look at what I found. It looks like the plenum is starting to detach from the air handler on this side and has a pretty decent air leak. I guess the attic deserves some cooling too. Let's take a look at it using my thermal gun. Yeah, that's not very good. Since I already have the thermal gun out, let's see how good our attic fans are working. That's pretty cool. You can also see all the nails coming through the OSB. Time for the fun part, getting back to the other side. And if you're wondering, yes, it was just as fun as last time. Now let's take a look underneath the plenum to see if it's separating from the air handler under there too. Lucky day, sure enough, it is. I know this is hard to see, but it is separated about halfway down the plenum. Now let's run a quick static pressure test. And this test is not going to be perfect because the ducts are so close to the air handler. And the supply probe is going to be very close to the unit, so it could drive up the static pressure some. I'm also not going to be putting the return probe in front of the filter because I didn't want to drill a hole in the air handler which is going to make the static pressure a bit lower, so maybe it will all wash out in the end. It's not going to be a perfect test, but it will tell us if there's something major going on here. If you're not sure what static pressure is, you might want to watch this video next. It covers which filter type is best for the HVAC unit, and which filter type is going to put the most strain on an HVAC unit. Static pressure is the key metric that we use to help figure that out. Now let's fire up the system and pull out the filter, and see what we got. It looks like we are running right at 0.7 external static pressure, which is a little high, but not Houston we have a problem high. 
Alrighty then, I got everything I need, and I'm tired of roasting, so time to get out of the attic. Actually, scratch that. I still need to figure out what areas these ducks are feeding. Man, I'm completely beside myself on how good my creative abilities are. My six-year-old daughter couldn't have done any better. Okay, so in this little diagram, we have our air handler here. Here's our return air, and this is our supply air. On our supply air, we have a six inch that feeds into the common area upstairs. I also have this 10 inch here that feeds the master bedroom, closet, and bathroom. This 10 inch here drops down to the downstairs. This seven inch here also feeds the other side of the upstairs common area, along with the bathroom. This five inch here feeds my daughter's room. This five inch here feeds feeds my son's room. This 10 inch here drops down and supplies the other half of the downstairs. We have this 18 inch here that's pulling from the upstairs common area. Hey, my hat. So the reason why I wanted to track all this down is because I want to see how many CFMs this ductwork is designed to handle. So I'm running the calculations out on the right of the screen as you can see now. And on the left of the screen, I'm doing an airflow test. So we can compare pen to paper to a real life test. I'm also getting duct sizes for each vent so we can fully diagram out all the duct work, which will be handy later. Now I pulled this duct sizing chart right off the internet. There's a lot of them out there and for the most part, they're all about the same. And we're gonna be focusing on the flex duct section, which is telling us for whatever size duct we have, how many CFMs we should be getting out of that duct. For instance, a five inch duct should be getting around 50 CFMs, a six inch around 75, and so on. And as a side note, this is all just a rough rule of thumb. All this is is a good indicator just to see what the sizing of our ductwork is, not the actual CFMs that it's delivering, because it's not taking into account how straight each duct run is, how many bins they have. I'm also only looking at the main ducts coming off the supply, and I'm not looking at the ductwork from beginning to end on how they all branch out. I can use a duculator to help track some of that down, but there's no reason to do that because I'm using a vent hood to get the most accurate readings. Back to our spreadsheet. You can see that we have three 10 inch ducts, each capable of handling 300 CFMs. We have one seven for 110 CFMs and two fives each good for 50 CFMs, which is all totaling up to 1185 CFMs. We also have one 18 inch return duct which can provide 1300 CFMs of return air. The rough rule of thumb when you're calculating CFMs is you wanna be at 400 CFMs per ton. And since this is a four ton system, that means 1600 CFMs. So we are undersized by one ton of air and on the return side by 300 CFMs. Now that we got everything tracked down, let's take a look at what we got. You can see here we have the upstairs with the air handler and all the ductwork. Here's the downstairs ductwork. And for the downstairs, you can see that we have this 10 inch duct that's feeding into this chase right here, dropping somewhere down by the pantry where the ducts are then being distributed. And the same thing is happening on the other side of the downstairs. This 10 inch is dropping down in this chase here. This 10 inch here is feeding the master bedrooms. This six inch is feeding the common area along with this seven inch feeding the common area and one bathroom. These two fives here are feeding the kids rooms. And for the downstairs, there's not a whole lot of issues. When it comes to airflow, with its open floor plan, the air all kind of balances out. And we have a porch over this west wall, so the sun never directly hits it. And we also have good tree coverage on this side of the house and on the front of the house. And this wall here is kind of close to the neighbor's house, so it never sees the sun either. I do have some hot and cold spots upstairs. And it's mostly from this west wall right here where the sun sets. And this room right here gets really hot. That's partially due to being on the west wall and how they ran this duct run. The master bedroom does have an eight inch running to it, so it doesn't get quite as bad. However, there are some issues with airflow, which I'll get into later. And one of the problems with the two story home is heat rises. So heat can come from the downstairs up this stairwell up into the common area. Okay, so here we have our supply CFM calculations that we did earlier. And down here is the CFMs that the ductwork is actually providing. You can see that we have seven supply runs coming off the supply plenum. And four of these are supply and distribution boxes that are splitting out into additional duct runs. And down here you can see that we end up with a total of 16 vents. So our supply calculations was showing 1185 CFMs. And what it's actually delivering is 1204 CFMs. Overall, pretty much tit for tat. Now, if we divide this out by 400 CFMs per ton real quick, we can see what our tonnage is. So the trunks before the ductwork breaks out, it's sized for three tons of ductwork when we need four, and it is delivering three tons of airflow. Might as well just have a three ton system. 
Now, how does three tons of ductwork perform with a four ton system on a 2,700 square foot house? And the only way that we're able to get away with this at all is because the house is well insulated with R39 insulation in the attic, it has good windows and doors, so the house stays fairly well sealed, and we also have good tree coverage around the house. Without those things, this would look a whole lot worse. And on this spreadsheet, I am showing you the data log reports for September 10th. And on this day, it got up to around 92 degrees. The orange lines is the temperature, and the green lines is humidity. The thermostat is set at 72 degrees, and this data logger is right beside the thermostat. And you can see the AC is kicking on whenever temperatures reach around 74 degrees, and shuts off whenever it hits around 70 degrees. Which makes it clear that I'm running a basic single stage system. Now I also installed a fully variable communicating system on this exact same ductwork, and you're really not supposed to install a high-end system like that on one ton of undersized ductwork. Actually, you shouldn't do it on any system, but you really shouldn't do it on a infinity system because you can end up freaking it out. But I did it anyways just to see if it could improve some of these hot and cold spots. So you might want to check out that video next. You'll also get to see us replacing the system in that video, which ended up being pretty cool. Back to it then. For the downstairs, since it has a more open floor plan, we really don't end up with hot and cold spots. Then if we look over here to the upstairs common area, you can see how the temperatures come down at night, and temperatures are reaching all the way up to around 78 degrees. So we're ending up with a pretty drastic temperature swing in comparison to the downstairs. And you can see that the master does okay, and that's largely due to it having an eight inch duct on this room, which is giving us five air changeovers an hour. I'm not going to get into air exchange rates per hour in this video, which would just end up making it too long, so maybe I'll do another video on that later. You can see that we're having a pretty decent issue in my daughter's room, and the temperatures are reaching up to around 80 degrees during the heat of the day. And my son's room is briefly reaching all the way up to 76 degrees, until around 12 o'clock and then temperatures come down. So these two rooms need some minor improvements, and these two spaces need major improvements. You're probably saying, I get it Kenneth, you've got problems. Well, this problem isn't quite as bad as what the doctors say about my head, probably from hitting it too many times as a kid. But anyways, let me show you how I would fix all of this. Increasing my ductwork a full ton is not all that easy to do. And the reason for that is I can't get to the downstairs ductwork. Meaning, in order to get to it, I'd almost have to do some remodeling. Removing sheetrock, getting into the chase, and so on. And that's not really an option for me. My downstairs currently only has a ton and a half of airflow. So the question is, is how do I add an extra 200 CFMs down there? Well, there's actually a couple tricks that we can use. Let me show you real quick. Back to XL. One trick that we use all the time is upgrading the duct run right above the stairs. And as long as a vent is pushing downstairs, it's going to help drive air that direction. So if I increase this duct run right here, let's say go from a 7 inch to a 10 inch, and replace this 6 inch with a 9 inch, we'd be increasing the CFMs out of that vent by around 100 CFMs. And a good chunk of that is going to be pushed downstairs. Because right now that duct is running, as you can see over here, 112 CFMs. And the ideal CFMs for a 9 inch is 225 CFMs. It's not going to 100% all go downstairs, but it's definitely going to help. There's also another trick that we can exploit. You see the green and purple ducts running to the chase, which are supplying the downstairs air. We can increase these 10 inch ducts that we could actually get to, to a 12 inch. Add a 12 to 10 inch reducer at the chase, and connect the two ducts together. So the duct that's coming off the supply is a 12 inch, tying into the existing 10 inch in the chase. This will increase the air velocity and increase the total CFMs that it's delivering downstairs. We now have a 12 inch that is ideal for 480 CFMs, feeding into a 10 inch that is ideal for 300 CFMs. The end result is gonna put us somewhere in between. It should increase the airflow by around 80 CFMs per duct run. So pushing around 160 additional CFMs downstairs. And I can show you all a real life example of this happening because my master bedroom kinda has a similar setup. You can see we have a 10 inch running off the supply, which is feeding an eight inch, a four inch, and a five inch. Sorry, I have to lean over to miss the camera. So ideally this main duct is capable of supplying 300 CFMs. Then it branches out to this eight inch, which is good for 160, this five inch, 50 CFMs, and the four inch, 20, which comes out to 230 CFMs. So this ductwork is undersized in comparison to the trunk that is feeding it. And we know that the eight inch is good for 160 CFMs on ideal ductwork. However, it's actually outputting 205 CFMs. So this section of ductwork is actually producing 278 CFMs, which is 48 additional CFMs. So essentially, this is what I'm talking about doing to the downstairs. So dealing with the duct above the stairs and upsizing the downstairs ducts that we can get to 
should put the downstairs in a whole lot better position. Now let's pivot to the upstairs. That's going to be a whole lot easier to deal with because we can get to everything from the attic. Since we're already talking about the master bedroom, let's go ahead and pick up where we left off. As we were talking about earlier, this eight inch duct is pushing 205 CFMs and the master suite is running 278 CFMs. So if I change this duct right here to a nine inch and we get 225 CFMs like we should be getting out of it, now this entire area is able to push 300 CFMs. This change allows us to fully utilize the 10 inch duct that is feeding the master bedroom. We would leave the bath and closet alone. And this duct run here is the one above the stairwell that we already talked about going to a nine inch. So 112 CFMs to 225. We would leave the kids bathroom alone. And the back area of the common space has a six. We can replace that with a seven inch, which gives us 110 CFMs. We would put a six inch in both of the kids' rooms, which would give them 75 CFMs. And again, for the downstairs, I was assuming I can push an additional 160 CFMs. So I'm just going to add that to the total here. And with all those changes made, you can see that we're only down 45 CFMs. From here, we still need to replace our supply plenum and push all of our ducts further back from the air handler. That way, each duct that the supply plenum is feeding will all be pressurized evenly. That takes care of our supply air. However, we still have our return air to deal with. This 18 inch duct is ideal for 1300 CFMs. So what we need to do is come up with 300 additional CFMs. A solution to this is we can run an eight inch return to the master bedroom, a six inch return to each of the kids rooms, and that would give us an additional 310 CFMs, fixing that problem. Before we jump into our summary and conclusion, I got a real big favor to ask of you. If you find yourself in our service area in Texas, and if you ever need any air conditioning and heating service or replacement, that you would give us an opportunity to earn your business. And if you're not in our service area, you can still help us out. Please like and subscribe this video, that would be a big help. Now on to our summary and conclusion. Now circling back to the previous owners that we're talking about at the beginning of the video, they replaced the ductwork, they added insulation, attic fans, and so on. And did that help? I'm sure it helped some. But at the end of the day, it didn't solve the problem. So we have a four ton system on three tons of ductwork delivering three tons of airflow, meaning it's going to have to run 25% longer to satisfy the house. The system should easily be able to last around 15 years. Now it's probably closer to 12. You end up with more repair bills. And since the system is running longer and harder, that means it's not running very efficiently. Now we're throwing away hundreds of dollars a year because of that. So all the money that they spent on efficiency upgrades like blown in insulation, the attic fans, it is just basically going out the window. So they spent all that money only to achieve subpar results. And with a good ductwork design, it eliminates all of that. I am gonna be making all these duct modifications here in the next couple days. And I am gonna be data logging everything, so I'll be able to show you the end results of all these changes. But I can 100% tell you it's going to be a completely different house. It's gonna make the upstairs a whole lot better when it comes to hot and cold spots. I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, have a good one. Uh, what is, what is your computer doing on the ground? What is, what is going on here? Um, I thought you are trying to finish your video. I am. I can go faster now because it kept crashing on me and stuff, so I had to do something about it. It kept crashing? Yeah. What is that monstrosity? Well, you know, it can actually, you know, keep up with me now, so... I don't have a problem with, uh, you know, doing video stuff. Okay, well, while you're finishing this video, I was reading some of the comments, and uh, you can't say CFMs. You're supposed to say CFM. I always say cubic feet per minute. Cubic feet? Cubic, cubic feet per minute. Minutes with an S? So I say it. So minutes, so no S. Fine, CFM. I, I make sure none of that makes it in this video. Okay, just gotta be sure. Get out of here. 12 seconds later. I bet you $20 he's not finishing this video. Really? <laughs>